Alternative Payloads, this time on Metasploit Minute. Metasploit Minute is brought to you by viewers like you. If you get value from the show and can spare even a dollar to support this show, please consider contributing at metasploitminute.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. Today we're going to be going over alternative payloads. A lot of people say that interpreter, 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 every time is automatically associated with, with Metasploit. And that's not the only payloads that are in there. There's actually, what, 342 different types of payloads. So I encourage you to go into and try out some of the payloads that are in there. Um, in this episode, we're just going to be going over five and, and, um, and just touching the surface on what's out there to kind of get you a feel for what what the mindset behind some of those are and, um, and the fun that you can actually have with them. So the first one we're going over is an actually an OSX one. Um, and it is the, and you can see the rest that we're going to be going over, is the um, say payload. And all this does is we say use, paste it in, and the only options in here is the text that it's going to say. So this payload's there for accessibility reasons, and um, we're going to be using it to make funny noises on, on uh, remote systems. Uh, but in this case, it's going to be my own. So we can set the text to pretty much anything we want. So we're going to set text to, you know, um, hello world, just to make it say hello world. And then inside of every payload module, you can use the, co uh, the, the command generate. With the dash H shows you what options there are. And we can just generate dash T. And then in um, for the OSX versions, we're going to get it out in Mako format or um, um, the format that binaries in, in OSX are stored in. And we're going to oops set the file for it to go to, to uh, root desktop uh, evil dot bin. And that's it. To use that payload, that's all you have to do is to generate the binary. Now I have a bin that I can then push over to you know, an exploited host or, or somewhere, or just copy it over on a USB stick when someone forgets to lock the screen and set it up to automatically run when they unlock their screen. So we're going to run this over on my system. We got the evil.bin sitting in the Metasploit minute directory. And we're going to do e, uh, chmod it plus x, evil.bin, evil.bin. And you can't see this very well, but uh, hopefully with the. Hello, Professor Falcon. Would you like to play a game? How about a nice game of chess? <laughs> and you can make it say whatever you want, right? So obviously my computer's not doing what I told it to. Um, it's not saying hello world, uh, but someone's playing tricks on me. So we have that payload, um, and you can make it say pretty much anything you want. Um, and this one was really fast because of my settings on my system do go really fast. Um, uh, on other systems, it's going to kind of slow down a little bit. Um, and, and the text-to-speech is great. It's, you can make it do all kinds of hilarious things. So the next one we're going to go into is the message box. And this is really standard. Um, it's a lot like the say, except for it's just popping up a message box. Um, uh, so the default is that it has a, an icon um, of no. Uh, the text is hello from MSF, and the title is message box. And you can configure this however you want. Um, the cool things are that you can make it a different icon, like a question mark or whatever. So in the um, in CCDC, we actually had uh, a wonderful um, auto message box payload that was asking the user, "Would do you like turtles? Yes or no?" And um, we did this very similar to how Metasploit's payload is. So set the icon to question, set the text to "Do you like?" Turtles. Set the title to important question. So all capital because we're all yelling at everything. Generate T exe. Um, this is going to generate an executable format. 
We're going to store it on our desktop root desktop evil.exe. So if you ever find an evil.exe on your system, it's probably me, I'm sorry. Um, you can blame me. Copy. We're going to go over to our Windows box. And for some reason, paste isn't working. So in this instance, we're going to stop for a second. We're going to go and get a, a shell. And then once we have a shell, we're going to upload that way since VMware Fusion is being mean to me. All right, so we're back and we're going to upload the message box one to show you guys how this works. So um, get into our sessions our directory, msf minute. We're going to upload our temp or root desktop evil.exe there. Ah, forgot to tell it where to go. Go over here, double click our evil.exe. It has a question box. It is only an okay message box. You can uh, modify the shell code if you want for that, but um, it says important question and you it okay and that's it. That's all the payload does. So now we're going to go back and we're going to use our next payload down the line is add user. Now this is an important um, one because this add user is a um, just like the message box you see that there's no other um, uh, other slashes in it. Uh, because there it says windows and then message box and no other underscores or slashes that means it's a single we talked about staging and singles before, um, and particularly the Windows add user, I believe we've already covered a little bit, but um, to add a user in Windows, you do have to be an administrator. So I'll show you how this is gonna work um, when we do this. So use payload add user. And the great thing about this payload is since it's all cupped in one, um, this can execute on a system even without network um, connectivity. So that's why some of these payloads are good to know, um, especially when you have um, instances where you either have low latency or zero um, connectivity at all and you want to have this, um, this payload execute still. So we're going to set our user to, uh, to uh, Bob, set our password to our infamous walk, um, set WMIC to true. So this is the true false saying, will it resolve the administrators group or not? This is important because um, how you spell administrators on other systems, other languages is not always the same. Um, so this, this payload actually it has inside of it a way to resolve which one the administrators group it is and add your user to that group. So options, make sure our, our options are great. Now, this payload does not bypass, just so you know, this payload does not bypass any, any complexity requirements that that user needs to have. So if, if they have a requirement that there has to be 12 characters in the in complexity, it's not going to uh, allow this or, or it has to have a special character. This payload is going to still work, but it's just not going to add a, a user. So it won't really work. File root desktop evil2.exe. We're getting creative now. We're going to copy this. So we're going to upload it. Sessions dash I1. And we're going to upload root desktop evil2.exe to there. And you can see that on this side, it executes, but we probably don't have, oh, we do have a Bob user. Oh, uh, because I have it adding, uh, the reason it added a Bob user is because it was running as administrator and I don't have UAC enabled on this thing, so that's why it worked. Um, I wasn't expecting it to, but you can see that Bob is now there. It is an administrator and, and it's all done. So if you wanted to add this as a persistence method, so if you wanted it so that even if they deleted the, the uh, deleted the user Bob and then maybe had it so that every time they turned on the user it re-added it. That's a way you can use this um, uh, payload. So even if you're not connected to it, you still have a way in. It's sort of like adding your own back door. Um, and then the next one, the next one is Meterpreter, um, but it's Java Meterpreter. And the thing about Java Meterpreter is that you can run it on anything, right? Anything that has Java, you can uh, use this payload on. 
So if you don't know the OS of the target system, let's say um, you're fishing a, a, a corporation, but the corporation, unknown, unbeknownst to you, has all uh, Macs, um, but they all have Java installed on Macs, you can use this payload and then not have to worry about what kind of um, backend system or OS it has. So we're going to do the same thing. Set our L host to 172.16.102. I think that's our host. 102.137. 37. Cannot type today. Set our L port if we want, but we're not going to generate. Now, when selecting the dash T, it's the type of payload that it's going to output in. Now, you could select a lot of these different ones, and it doesn't really um, pull you down to a specific type. But in this case, um, a Java payload, you normally want to go with the type war. And that war file is uh, a jar file. It's the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do is the type war and file root desktop evil.jar. And then the issue here is that we don't have a handler set up. We have nothing to receive it. So we go back around or back use payload or exploit multi handler. Set our payload to the same payload we had before. And we can just push up to get that. And just without the payload type. Show options. It's already set up for us. Point dash J. Oh. I did use instead of use payload handler set payload to that show options l host 172.16.102.137 now exploit dash j so now we have the payload handler set up now if we execute this war jar file here Let's, let's just execute it on top of our Kali box just to test out to make sure that it works. And watch, it doesn't. Invalid or corrupt jar. I may have lied to you. So I lied a little bit to you. The dash uh, war file type is not the one we're be, we should be using. It's actually the raw type. So um, the raw format is the raw format for whatever payload you're selecting. It happens to be that um, raw for the Java interpreter is in jar format already. So I did generate dash T raw dash F um, and put it back in the jar. I then just did Java dash jar evil jar and it worked. So we can see in the sessions we actually got our session, session uh, root at attack. Now what we're going to do is see if uh, one of our other other um, systems has Java on it, and if it doesn't, we're just going to keep you know, no Java. And my Mac OS X doesn't have Java either, <laughs> so um, you can see that we have that session. All right, so we're going to continue on to the last and final payload, the coolest payload, I think, because this is a Firefox payload. Now, why would a Firefox payload be interesting? I'll tell you, because <laughs> you can't talk back to me. Yeah, I can move <laughs> So, there have been recent uh, Firefox exploits, um, and they've all been patched, so don't worry, um, that didn't quite allow um, remote code execution, or, or more along the lines of, uh, of direct uh, reverse TCP shells, or dropping to a shell because of some of the sandboxing that, that Firefox does, I believe. Um, so they created some of these payloads that are actually pretty cool. So the first payload that I'm going to talk about um, is the Firefox exec payload. And this basically runs a command um, and it'll operate just like, just sort of like the Java payloads where they're, they're system agnostic. The, um, the Firefox payloads are, are simply inside of Firefox. So no matter what you, Firefox you're running this on, if it's vulnerable to this version, uh, this, uh, the, this exploit that was there, um, you have this running. The cool thing about this is, let's say that you are on a system already, 
but you want some kind of persistence. You can actually make um, this payload uh, part of the cache or, or extensions portion, and it's just JavaScript, that then does these things. So you can actually um, uh, have some sort of persistence inside of Firefox every time they boot up Firefox. So what we're going to do is, is um, leave this touch command um, as a.txt, and we're going to generate raw format. And we see it. And if we go through this, and, and be careful when you do raw without actually pushing it to a file, um, depending on the different payload type, you, you might have some uh, errors in your terminal. It might screw things up. So you can see that this is pretty um, straightforward. It's just saying, you know, here are the things that are going to be set, and here's the command it's going to run. Um, if it's in Windows, it does it this way. If it's not, it does it this way in bin sh. Um, so really straightforward payload, but the cool thing is you can, all, like I said, incorporate this in. And what we're going to do is, um, actually, we're just going to leave this like this for now. Um, I, I implore you to explore all of the options that are available for this, th this um, payload, as well as the other payloads that we've gone over, and for you to look through the 300 and some odd um, payloads that are there. So what do you think? Tell us more at msf at hack5.org, hak5.org, and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And a really huge thanks to everyone who's supported the show so far. You, you can find ways to donate and get awesome Metasploit Minute merchandise or swag at metasploitminute.com. Every dollar goes towards making this show just for you, and for that I am deeply grateful. So until next time, I'm Mubix, and you'll be hacking, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Hey there, yeah, you. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate all the awesome feedback and support we've received from viewers exactly like you. Well, not as cool, but you know, you get the gist. If you haven't already checked it out, you could really help if you go over to the, our Patreon and support the show directly. If you can't, that's cool. A simple like or subscribe goes a long way too. Either way, thanks for watching, and we'll talk later, man. Take it easy.